In this video, we're going to develop the control system that will allow us to easily animate the various parts of our stage, such as the door and the curtains. That's right. This is not something that we must do, but really it's a good habit to get into setting up control systems sure. that help animate parts of the scene that may be difficult to get to or that you find yourself needing to animate quite often. It's just a simplification approach. That's, That's right. It. And there's a bunch of reasons to do this. I mean, first and foremost, like later on, once you really heavily get into animating, you may be involved in a project where you're not the animator, but you're setting up the scene. And so it's going to be your job to make this as easily animatable as possible. That's right. You know, let's take a look at our stage, as a matter of fact. Go ahead and bring the stage back. Let's All right. think about something. In the real world... In a theater, you've got curtains, you've got spotlights, you've got sound, you've got all sorts of things. Sure. And generally, above the general public, in the back, there's a room mm. that's got glass in the front. And there's some poor guy inside. <laughs> Actually, he's not too poor because he's in front of tons of switches and yeah. buttons and the whole nine yards. Usually thousands of dollars worth yes. of equipment. Yes, and they do all sorts of things to control the environment of that theater. That's right. Now, doesn't it make sense that all of those controls are in one central place. Absolutely. Right here, if we need to control the curtains, which we're going to for this animation, and we're going to need to control the door, they're located in separate areas. That's three different areas you're going to have to go to. Right. Uh, basically, the left control rod, the right control rod, and finally the door. Sure. So we'd have to jump around to all of these just in order to animate them in our scene. That's right. So why not create our own little control center, just like in the real world, so that we can centralize location for curtain control, and for the door. Absolutely. Or even just one more reason to make this uh, more important to do is uh, think about when we animate the function curves that are going to be the result of our animation. Like in this case, our door to open is going to have to go from a value of 0 to 120. Mm -hmm. That's a real huge value jump as far as our curve is concerned. Okay. Where our curtains might not, will only be scaling between like 0.3 and 1. Right. So in order to edit these at the same time, we're going to do a lot of zooming and moving around. Yeah. Plus, uh, just having everything kind of on a central control system, if you will, and then having our numbers at about the same range as you were just right. saying, just makes it a lot easier. Everything's right there with only selecting one object as opposed to having to select multiples. And then the curves are going to fall in you know, a very similar range. That's right. Now, what I'm going to do is very quickly and easily, I'm going to create a multi-million dollar sound control board system. Music, please. It's going to blow your mind. I'm going to go to create... Locator. Dun, dun, dun. There you go. Remember what I said a few videos back about a locator. It's really nothing more than a transform node with a visual icon on the screen. Which That's fortunately it. is all we need. That's because right. if we combine this with the things that we've learned in the previous videos, such as uh, creating custom attributes, hooking things up with set-driven key, we can make this locator do just about anything in our scene. That's a fact. And by moving it over to the side, as Zach is about to do here, <laughs> and maybe even up in the air like a real controller. Wow, I center, was right on cue with that one. Anytime we need to manipulate the curtains or the door, all we'll need to do is to select this object. So let's go ahead and give it a name. So we'll call it Stage Control. Sounds good. Like so. So now let's add some of our own buttons and switches to it. Not a problem. We'll go to Modify, Add Attribute. And the first attribute I'll create will be to control the stage door. So let's call it that. We'll call it Stage Door. Notice my capitalization. All lowercase on the stage, capital D on the door. Again, just taking advantage of how Maya handles the nice channel names over in the channel box. Now I'll leave my data type at float, so I'll get a nice smooth transition from my minimum to my maximum value. I'll set my minimum to zero. Maximum up to 10, and I won't even worry about typing a default because I want it to be at zero. Leaving it blank is the same thing. That's right. With that, I'll click Add, and you'll notice stage door pop in, already set to zero. How nice. Let's go ahead and test that out just real quick. If I virtual slide it, it goes Nothing up to 10. happens. There yeah. you go. But it's not hooked up to anything. That's right. So now let's add one more for curtains. It's curtains for you. And we'll go to, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was bad. So uh, we'll go to minimum of zero, maximum of 10. This time I'll just click OK. And the window disappears, we have stage door and curtains. So now our stage control has a few of its own little switches. That's right. Very nice. And we could add as many as we want, but right now this is all we need, so it's all we'll add. But as Zach just demonstrated with the stage door attribute a second ago, nothing happens when you manipulate that attribute value. So we need to use the set-driven key um, stuff that we taught you guys earlier. Sure to do some uh, hooking up here. Well, sure. Right now, it's like we have this multi-million dollar soundboard with no wires running in Right. So <laughs> it's just, is that? It looks cool, but that's it. So what I'm going to do is set up a set-driven key to make my door open. Very simple. I'm going to start off by selecting my door because, as we already know, if we have an object selected when we open the set-driven key window, it will be the driven. Boom. Auto-loaded. Loads right up into the driven, which is exactly what I want. So now I'll select my stage control locator and click load driver. It's that easy. 
My driving attribute will be what? I would say stage door. And you'd be right. And then if we move over here to our door, we're going to be rotating on the y-axis, but don't be afraid to double check. You can always open up the rotate tool and actually open the door and see which axis. You can axis. see over in the channel box why is indeed changing. That's right. So if you ever want to test it, that's fine. Also, just a, a little quick tip that I throw out from time to time when I'm teaching. You can test it with the move tool, too. Just pretend that the axis that you want to rotate on is the hinge. Right now, if we had a hinge on our door, it would be pointed in the Y axis. So we'll go ahead and choose rotate Y, like so. Now, let's check our attributes. Stage control. I'm sorry, well, stage control dot stage door Ooh. is set to zero, and uh, door rotate Y is closed. closed. So it's that's closed. good. We'll go ahead and key this relationship. So now I'll select stage control. We'll drag stage door up to 10. You could set it to 10 manually if you like. I'll jump back over to stage door. Notice how he's selecting the various objects by simply clicking on them inside the dialog set driven key. Absolutely. Now I'll grab the rotate tool, and I'm just going to arbitrarily rotate the door open to something that looks cool. So probably maybe a little bit more. Maybe a little bit more. Okay. There we go. There we go. So that's about 109. Okay, we'll give it a flat 110 because okay. we're so close anyway. <laughs> so nice round numbers. Rock on. Now with that, just uh, to double check, stage door is at 10. Door is open, so now we'll key. So let's go ahead and test our attribute before we go any further. We'll click back to stage control. I'll select stage door, and here with the virtual slider, door opens, door closes. Boom, boom, boom. It's too easy. Nice. Awesome. So now let's set up a, a method to control our curtains. We don't even have to close the set driven key dialog. No. Nope. Let's just rotate around, and what I'll do is I'll select my left curtain control and my right curtain control, and I'll click load driven, and here they are in the window. We'll switch my driver attribute over to curtains. I'll select left and right curtain controls. And what am I going to be using? Well, in case you've already forgotten, we're going to be scaling these guys in the X axis, like so. So I'll go ahead and choose Scale X. Now, before I key, let's make sure our relationship is set up properly. We'll switch over to Stage Control. Curtains is currently set to zero. With curtains at zero, I want these curtains closed. Makes sense. So I'm going to select both my curtains. Notice I'm just going to drag down both of them in the Driven dialog to make sure you have both selected. Then on scale X, I'll just punch in a value of 1, which will set these back to their default scale. Curtains close. With that, click the key button. Next, we'll go back to stage control. I'll take curtains, drag it all the way up to 10. Nothing happens yet. I'll select left and right curtain control. We'll select scale X, and I'll just kind of drag these open until I like them, maybe somewhere right around there. Okay. So that looks pretty good. With that, I'll click key, and let's test out our curtains attribute now. So I'll select curtains, virtual slider, boom. Boom. Very nice. So now the idea is that we have some control for both the door and for the curtains in one central place. That's right. So now all i got to do is I select the stage control locator and everything I need to do. So right here, well, stage you can't, can't see, see the door. So we'll open up the, the curtains and then we can play with the stage door all day. Uh, check this out. He can even go over there and drag. <laughs> I had to. I know. All right, so uh, go ahead and drag over both the stage door and the curtains, and you can control both at the same time oh, if sure. you wanted to. Da -da -da. Boom. The important thing to keep in mind, that is when he was setting up or doing the actual set-driven key um, per, um, operation, mm -hmm. excuse me, right. basically he was always setting the driver first, then the driven. He would double-check to make sure the driver was what he wanted, then he'd hit key driver, then driven, then key. Right, and practice this. I mean, seriously, if, even if you've been through this once or twice, get to the point where you can create set driven keys with your eyes closed, not even thinking about it. I can't tell you how much it's going to speed up every animation process you do. That's it. So that's going to wrap up this video. Thanks a lot.